Well, hello there. Thanks for tuning into my channel today. My name is Cody Piper. So I hear you want to put yourself into a movie. Well, I've done that before in my past, so I think I have the tools that I can show you how to put yourself into any movie. So let's watch some of those examples now. So before we get into the details and the specifics, I want to talk about the big picture and give you guys an overview of how to do this effect. So first, you want to find the movie that you're going to put yourself into, so you can bring that into your editor. Second, you want to figure out what spot in the movie you want to actually put yourself into. So third, then you want to find or create a clean background plate from the movie so you can put yourself over top of that. Fourth, you want to analyze the lighting and the camera work that was used in the scene so you know what to do when you're filming your subject. And then next, you want to set up the same lights and then use the same camera techniques that they use in the scene to actually film your subject. And make sure to do it on a green screen so that way you can composite your person into the shot. Then next, you want to actually bring your person in or bring yourself in and film the scene just like they did in the movie. Next, you want to bring your footage into the computer and key it out so the background is gone so that way you can place yourself over top of that clean background plate. And then next, you want to color grade your footage to match whatever the background plate is. And then lastly, you want to add in any atmosphere or VFX elements to add realism to the shot, such as snow or a camera shake to kind of bring those two moving pieces together into one. So first things first, you're going to need a clean background plate to be able to blend with the original movie. Now in the best case scenario, the movie will provide that for you, as you can see in this example here. So if that's the case for you, you can go ahead and skip this step. But I'm gonna go ahead and dive deep into how to create a perfectly clean background plate, even if you can't find one from the original movie. So here's the original shot that we're gonna be compositing into. So our task is to grab a still frame from the movie and remove all the kids that are inside the train, and then we can composite our actor into the shot. Now for this example, we're going to be using Photoshop, but you can use Content Aware Fill and After Effects. If you want to learn how to do that, go ahead and check out my other tutorials that I've made on that subject. And that may work better for you depending on your shot. But in most situations, creating a still frame from Photoshop is going to be the best option and give you the most flexibility. So what we'll do is we'll scrub through the original movie and take as many screenshots as we can that will be helpful. So what you want to look for is where the kids are moving. So if there's a kid in one spot at the beginning of the shot and he moves out of the way to reveal some of the background, you want to take another screenshot to be able to capture that. If they move from side to side or if they walk, they're revealing what's actually behind them. And that's going to make everything a lot easier in Photoshop when you're trying to create an entire clean frame from just this one image. So analyze the shot, watch it through a bunch of different times, make sure you take all the screenshots that you can and get as much of the background clean as you can in this step to make the process smoother from here on out. So now that you have all your screenshots, go ahead and start dragging all those into Photoshop and lining those up. In my shot, the camera didn't move at all, so I don't have to make any changes to the frames. I can just drop those in and they're already lined up and good to go. Then you want to create an inverted layer mask by clicking Option and the layer mask icon down at the bottom and go through each of your layers and use the brush tool to paint in the areas that contain the clean background. And you want to do this as much as you can to make sure you have the cleanest background using what is naturally there from the film. Now that you've done all that you can with the screenshots that you created from the film, it's time to start cloning. So go ahead and start by creating a new layer. And then to activate the clone tool, press S. Now the clone tool pulls from an area of the image that you select and paints from that spot onto a new area of the image. So just to give you a little demonstration, I have this picture here of Will Ferrell dressed as Buddy the Elf. If I hold option and click on his face, I'm telling Photoshop this is where I want to paint from and allows me to paint from that one spot onto another part of the image. So I paint that here and as you can see, now that I've made that first click, it works relative from wherever I started to. So now it's going to paint in the gift. And you'll notice as you're painting, Photoshop gives you a little crosshair 
to show where the original is coming from. Now if I hold option and click again on his face, I can continue to clone him over and over again. And that's why the name of the tool is the clone tool. So this can be used in so many different ways. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna choose the seats on the right side of the frame and then clone those in over top of this kid's head. And so I'm not doing a lot at once. I'm just doing small areas to make sure I keep the precision of what these seats actually look like. Whenever you use the clone tool, make sure to start a new layer. You don't want to permanently clone onto a layer because you won't be able to go back and edit that later. So you want to practice non-destructive editing techniques and constantly add new layers as you're cloning new spots. That way you can manipulate individual places that you've been cloning. And one thing with the clone tool that you may not know is you have an option to choose where you're sampling from. 99% of the time I have mine set to the current layer and below the layer. So basically it's what's visible. But you can also set it to the current layer only, or you can set it to sample from all layers. So now that we finished the seats, I'm gonna move on to this back wall. So what I'll do first is create a new layer, and then I'm gonna clone the middle panel onto the far right panel. And as you can see, the scale doesn't really line up. The middle panel is a little bit bigger than the right panel. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hit Command T to transform this layer and press Option and click to change your anchor point. And I'm gonna change my anchor point down to the bottom left here and hold Option again and scale the width in to match the size of the panels. And then to clean this up, I'm gonna choose a spot above where the kid's head was and just paint that down here at the bottom. And that cleans up the outside pretty well. Now I'll do the same thing to the inside. And that looks good there. Then I'll do the same technique with this girl's head here. And that brings us to our next technique, duplicating and then masking. Let's hit Command Option Shift N to make a new layer, and then Command Option Shift E to merge everything that's in the shot into that one layer. Once you've done that and you have your selection, you can duplicate that layer and that will give you just the left side of the door that we copied and some of those seats. And then flip the piece that we just created horizontally and drag that over to the right side of the door and line that up. And we're gonna use a blending mode called difference, which takes the difference between the shots and anything that's completely the same will appear black and everything that's different won't be black. And once we've got that lined up, we'll use the brush tool to paint out the parts that we're not gonna keep. So we'll use the same method here to remove the feet that are left over in the aisle and just duplicate part of the left aisle, bring it over to the right, paint it back in. All right, and then I'll clone out this kid's head here to finish up this whole right side. Now that the entire right side is clean, what I'm gonna do is actually just take a copy of the whole right side of the frame, duplicate it over to the left side to paint in some of those pieces from the left that still have some kids left over. Okay, so we have our completely clean plate right now. And technically you could stop here, but we're gonna go the extra mile. We're actually gonna add more of the frame on the top and bottom. And that's just gonna give us a little bit of extra quality when we add our camera shake, so it doesn't crop in too much on our still frame. The only problem with this is the shot from the movie doesn't give us what's on the top and bottom. We can't see what's underneath the back row of seats and we can't see what the ceiling looks like. So I'm gonna show you some techniques on how to guesstimate what would actually be behind these black bars that are cropping out our frame. So first we're gonna create a new layer and then merge all. Then we're gonna select the black bars down at the bottom, then press shift delete for content aware fill. As you can see, this does not look good. Disgusting. And neither did the top. Ah. So let's go ahead and undo that. And let's see if we can do this manually. So I'm gonna start by cloning this first light and lining that up with the second light right above that. And I'll just start painting in and I'm not really worried about getting it too clean at this point. So I'm just kind of creating a foundation here and a background to work with and to build upon. And then for this wooden beam that's going across the ceiling here, as it's coming towards the camera, it should be increasing in size. So I'm just gonna paint this one in parts and clone little pieces at a time to make sure it's looking right. Okay, so I'm gonna make a copy of that beam that I just created and move that to the left side. And now I'm gonna actually pay attention to some of the details that are in the original shot and start to clone those into the part that I'm trying to create. So I'll take these tan arches that are going across and start to build those in the right places. And then I'll bring the lights back in over top of that. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. So now I'm gonna use the same technique for the right side of the frame. Yes. Okay, so we've taken care of the top right. So now let's look at how to go about creating more of the back row of these seats that isn't actually there. So I'm gonna use the clone tool and I'm gonna choose this armrest here from a different chair and then resize the layer so that way I can steal part of the armrest and part of the legs that we're unable to see in this back row. And so since the perspective is different for this chair, I'm gonna line this up using the back of the chair first and create that layer. And then I'll resize that layer because we really only need what's underneath the armrest because we already have the armrest in the shot. And then I'll repeat this process and continue to clone and duplicate and steal from other pieces that are already in the shot that I can use to add to this back row. 
All right, now that we're finished up with that, I'll do the same thing that I did earlier, and I'll just take the whole right side of the frame and duplicate that, move that over to the left, and use that to fill in the places on the left side of the frame that still need to be fixed. All right, and now we're finished. So here's the original, and here's the final that we ended up with. Now, one more thing I wanna mention before the end of this video, it's a good idea to think ahead to all the VFX that you're gonna be adding in later. So just a quick example for the movie Elf, we added in snow over top of our footage to make it look like our pastor was really standing there inside of that snowy scene. So in order to make that look realistic, I had to remove all of these snowflakes because if I leave them there in the still frame, they're not moving at all, which looks really weird. So you wanna remove the snowflakes and add your snow in over top. So for your specific shot, make sure you're thinking ahead to those things and you're removing those now in this step so you don't have to backtrack.